Now let's pick up the pace a bit and go for a wood parquet shader. So I'll create a new Octane standard surface material, name it parquet and assign it. Hey folks, welcome to MoGraph Plus. This video is a free sample from our course, The Ultimate Introduction to Octane for Cinema 4D. It's a massive 20 hour long course in which we explore all the aspects of Octane for Cinema 4D thoroughly. Make sure to check it out, the link is in the description. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified about our latest videos. Now select the material, increase the base weight to 1, Let's set the diffuse model to Lambertian. As I mentioned, you can set it to Oranair and uh, play around with the diffuse roughness, but Lambertian creates some nice results. Add an image texture node and load this parquet.png texture. Now connect it to the base color input of the material. As this is the base color texture and we are in ACES, set the color space to sRGB. Next, let's add a transform node to the texture and increase its scaling to 1.25 so it sits bigger on the surface. Now let's go to the specular reflection layer. Specular weight and color can remain at 1 and white respectively. Roughness to 0 for now. IR can remain at the default state as we discussed earlier. Let's go for the specular roughness immediately and add an image texture node. Load this parquet roughness texture and connect it to the specular roughness input. Now use the existing transform node to control the transform input of this texture as well because we want the texture placement on the surface to match and the specular roughness map is obviously derived from the base color map. So I'm going to change the color space to non-color data as this is a data input and we are in ACES. If I solo the roughness texture and take a look at the texture you notice the narrow edge between the boards are black, which if used as a roughness map will end up giving us sharp reflections in those areas. And the wood grains are also darker, which again make the surface sharper if used as the roughness texture. By inverting it, the map will be proper to be used as a roughness map. Now the easiest way to do it is through the texture itself. If you select the image texture node, you notice it has an invert checkbox. Let's enable it, which inverts the texture. Like the plastic shader, let's add a range node after the texture so we can adjust the values for the roughness input easier. So connect the roughness texture to a range node and connect the range node to the reflection roughness input. I'm just going to make the dark values a bit brighter by increasing the output's min value to around 0.1 and that would make the sharp parts rougher. Let's quickly add some bump mapping as well. I'm going to add a new image texture node and load this parquet underscore bump texture. Use the existing transform node as its transform input so it matches with other textures and connect it to the bump input of the material for now. If we take a look at the texture by soloing it, we know for bump maps the black pixels cause indent and this map looks right at its original state. And let's decrease the bump height to around 0.01 and obviously we can use the power value in the texture or add a range node after it but for now let's just work with the bump height now like the plastic shader and because we want to add the unevenness as well using a noise map let's just add a range node after the bump texture you can hover over a connection and click once to be able to add a node 
or just do it manually. Now we can lower the output max value to around 0.75. This is still a bit too much, but as this will be mixed with the noise map later on, we will end up with half of what we have right now. Let's add that general waviness like the plastic shader. I'm just gonna steal the noise, the range, and the mix note from one of the plastic shaders and paste them here. Now connect the mix node to the bump input of the material and just connect the first bump texture to texture one input of the mix node. So that's our bump mapping. This range node gives me flexibility to go back and adjust the bump mapping. For example, I can select the range node for the first bump map and increase output max to something like two to get a stronger effect from that texture. For now, let's set it to 0.75. And finally, let's add the coats layer. Just set the coat amount 2.3. Coat roughness 2.1 as I don't want it to be very sharp. So that's why I don't use zero, for example, and code IOR to around 1.25. So it's limited to only the incidence angles. So that is our parquet shader. Let me show you the final render here. Make sure to visit our website mographplus.com and check out our premium CGI and rendering courses for Cinema 4D, 3ds Max, Maya, Arnold, Octane, Corona, V-Ray, Redshift and much more. See you in the next one.